بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم انفعني بما علمتني وعلمني بما ينفعني وزدني علما إنك العليم الحكيم اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وفت علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحلم اللهم ارزقني نعمة الإخلاص لوجهك الكريم بكل ما أقول وبكل ما أفعل اللهم أمين My topic today is about anal canal anatomy and this is an introduction to to speak about the very anal fistula. The anal canal anatomy <coughs> function is to maintain the fecal continence. The anal canal <laughs> represent the terminus of the large intestine and it is uh, measures about 2.5 to 5 centimeter in length and has two muscular complexes the internal and external sphincter which act in concert to provide the contractile effort need for needed for the fecal continence with internal sphincter providing the majority of the resting tone. So the anal canal, anatomical part of the anal canal extend from the perineal skin to the dentate line and measures about Two centimeter. The anal sphincter has three layers. Surgical anal canal. It is different from anatomical anal canal, and it extends from the perineal skin to the anorectal ring. The anorectal ring lies about one to one and a half centimeter above the dentate line. And the length of the surgical canal, it is four to five centimeter. Anal sphincter, as we said, we have three parts. Internal sphincter, it is continuous of the circular smooth muscle of the rectum, and it is invo involuntary and contracted during rest and relaxes at the defecation. Intersphenectric space and we have also the external sphincter and it is voluntary striated muscle divided into three layers that function as one unit. These three layers continuous cranially with the buborectal muscle and the levator anai. Here we have the axial cut MRI and we have the drawing of the for the same level in a male patient. As we see here, this is the natal cleft and this is the perineum here. Uh, this is male patient, as we said, and this is the external sphincter, and this is the internal sphincter, and the space between the internal and the external sphincter called inter space. And here we have the anal fossa. As the same here, we have the external sphincter, internal this is the anal canal here and the uh, internal sphincter and the space in, in between it is the intersphenectric space.
Here, this is a uh, uh, axial cut in female, and this is the drawing. And we see here that it is the estriorectal fossa. As we said, this is the external sphincter, and this is the internal sphincter, and the space in between interhemispheric space, intersphenectric space, and this is the vagina, and this is the urethra, and these are the corresponding drawing image, urethra, vagina, uh, exter internal sphincter, external sphincter, and the space in between. <laughs> Here, this is a coronal uh, drawing, as we see. Uh, this is the external sphincter, and this is the internal sphincter, and this is the space in between inter space, and this is consistent of fat. Oh, sorry, and it is consistent of fat and longitudinal muscle. And the space which is most where the fistula it is spread. And uh, we have the dentate line, as we see here, and this is the anal canal, and this is the anal verge. And, and the uh, transition zone where the, the squamous epithelial is continuous with the columnar epithelial, as in this area, at the level of the dentate line. The zone, it is characterized by presenting, by presence of longitudinal mucosal faults. These mucosal faults are known as column of morgagni. And the uh, distal of but distal part of each column, it is distal part of each column, we have a valve, and this is the with the small buckets and the crypts of Morgagni. And this is uh, about two centimeters from the anal verge. So we have the external sphincter, inter space contained fat and muscle, internal sphincter, dentate line, equipped of Morgagni, and this this space, this distance it is about two centimeter. Here another image, and this is the axial. And we have the external sphincter, internal sphincter, here the inner canal, and in between the inter-sphincter uh, inter space. Again, coronal drawing, internal sphincter, inter inter space, and external sphincter, and this is continuation to the buborectalis and levator and eye muscle. And this is the rectum, and this is the estriorectal fossa. And here, this is the dentate line. And this space, it is distance is about two centimeter. Again, this is coronal cuts. This is the internal sphincter, external sphincter, dentate line. And this is the space in between, and this is the steroidal uh, fossa. Here another another drawing, as we see, this is the steroidal and anal fossa, and here this is the external sphincter, and this is the internal sphincter, and the dash area, it is the inter uh, space, as we said, and this, uh, this is the continuation of the external sphincter of the buborectalis muscle.
again this is a MRI coronal cut we see here this is the internal sphincter external sphincter and the black it is interspheric space and this is the levator and I view muscle is your anal fossa Again, here, this is the interspheric space in the black line, and this is the external sphincter, and this is the internal sphincter, stuorectal anal fossa. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening and hoping to see you soon in another talk, continuation of the Berry and the Fistula. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب لك